I'm Sam LaPrade, and this is an hour to give, and I'm so honoured today to talk about an organisation that I have really learned a lot about in the last little while, and I know that you're going to learn a lot about as well, and that is Harmony House. The executive director, the one and only Marilyn Matheson, joins me now. Hi, Marilyn. Hi. Thanks for inviting us. I'm so happy you're here. And you brought a friend, Roberta's here as well. Hi, Roberta. Hi. Let's step back a little bit because Harmony House, as you know, I've gotten to know it because of you and our friendship. But for those that may not be familiar with Harmony House, tell us what you do. We are a transitional women's uh, shelter. Uh, that means that after you've been to an emergency shelter or at the moment because all the emergency shelters are full, you can come uh, refer yourself and we transition you out to the community. In other words, we give you a time to get over the trauma that you have, may have gone through and your children. We have a lot of children in the building as well. We have an in-house uh, childcare uh, for the women uh, too. So. Uh, we transition you, we help you with uh, resume skills, with uh, job prep, that sort of thing, uh, so that you can find uh, affordable housing. Um, in some cases, women have left without any of their ID or banking information, and we have a very good bank near us that helps us get them a new bank account so that they can start on their new journey um, away from their abuser. Wow. You said a lot there, and I think there's there's a lot to unpack, um, and we're going to get back, and I, there's some questions I want to ask you, but I really want to spend some time as well speaking with Roberta. What's your connection to Harmony House? I'm a resident there. Yeah. So for those that may not sort of understand the full, the full package of that, what does it mean to be a resident at Harmony House? It means you get a beautiful one-bedroom apartment. Um, mm. It comes fully decorated. Um, you get resources like the food bank, counseling's available, as Marilyn said, the resume writing, the job hunting. You have people there that are supportive and make you feel valued. Um, it's a very pleasant living environment. There's lots of support and it just it helps with the transition from the shelter. Mm -hmm. more, more real life, like mm -hmm. it's, it's more real life than being in a shelter. Mm -hmm. And when you see the big smiles and, and how proud Roberta is to be with Harmony House, is that what, what drives you, the kind of reaction we see from people like Roberta? Oh, absolutely. Uh, being able to help women out like that, and uh, as Roberta has told me her story, and she can tell it herself, uh, it can happen to anyone. Uh, anybody could be in an abusive relationship through no fault of their own, and we're not just talking about the women uh, facing the trauma, the children face the trauma as well. Mm, such a good point. Tell me your story. Uh, well, it, it can happen to anyone is what I call the title of my story. Um, about three years ago, I was a regular, active member of society. I had a good job with a good company. I was in a good relationship, had an apartment, you know, living a normal life. Um, and then suddenly, several months, several years later, actually, um, I was a victim of abuse from my, from my partner. Um, he attempted to kill me. And... Um, Thankfully, he was not successful. Um, so that led me to a ugly road of drugs and alcohol for a little while. Like after the trauma, I, I spiraled out of control and and dipped into drugs, alcohol, to you know to numb it out, to ease the pain. Um, and that led to losing the apartment that I was in. So that led to all of a sudden you're homeless. You spent all your money. You think you can bounce back. It's not as easy to bounce back as people think. Um, you're at your lowest after that, so you have no desire to find a job. You don't think anybody wants you. You just, you just, you're at the rock bottom, is what I felt. So I um, was able to. I only had to sleep on the street one night. I'm one of the lucky ones, I think. I only had to spend one night on the street, and then Cornerstone, this women's emergency shelter, was able to take me in, and I was there for eight months. And they were very, very supportive as well. But it, it's more of an emergency type event, so people are constantly coming and going. They're dealing with a lot of um, drug addiction problems, other addiction problems, mental health problems. So it's very chaotic and it's very, it's hard to find peace there. Um, you have to sort of fight for that in, within yourself and get your own peace and stability. Um, I was able to stay in my lane, stay out of trouble, stay away from all the drama and then eventually I got the call from Harmony House and I was beyond happy when I got that call because I knew that it was a transitional housing but what I didn't know was how remarkable it was. I really assumed it was just 
a similar environment, just I was in a bachelor apartment. So at least I'd be by myself, because at the shelter you share a room. So even up until the day I moved into Harmony House, I thought I was going into a small little bachelor, and I had a vision of a rundown building, similar to, you know, shelters, that, but that's okay, it would be my own space. When I opened the door and they showed me my unit, I literally got, cried. I cried. It was a beautifully decorated, fully decorated, one bedroom apartment. So I was shocked because I was like, this looks bigger than a bachelor. And they're like, it's not a bachelor, it's a one bedroom. It's all yours. I'm like, I have my own bathroom. I don't have to share with anybody. I don't have to, you know, worry about who's sleeping in the bed next to me. Um, and they just, it's a wonderful place. They took me in, they welcomed me, they settled me. Um, they made sure I was okay. They gave me everything I needed when I first moved in, and they continue to do that. They continue to give the support. If there's anything I need, I just call or drop into the office. Um, I'm never told no. You know, they, they're good at directing you to different resources or providing the resources yourself. And it's just made my leap from the homeless shelter. I, I know that this is transitional, and I know that it's a shelter, but it does feel more like it's a home because it's my own, I can cook for myself, I can, you know, do my own laundry, I can wash my own bedding, I can, you know, go to the bathroom when I want, which is, you, you don't have those luxuries in a shelter. So it's been a marvelous experience for me. Um, I was so grateful to get the call, but like I, I'm, like I said, I didn't realize what I was getting into until I actually arrived there, and it, mm -hmm. it was beyond my dreams. It's, it's a fantastic place to transition into. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I, it's not lost on me how brave it is, and thank you for that and for, for sharing some of those details. Marilyn, I don't know what else to say because she said it so beautifully, you know, that, you know, that, that Harmony House is a very different place. And I think one of the things about Harmony House, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that because you, you do your work very much in secret for, for reasons that yes. to keep everybody safe, that it isn't maybe a place that people know as much as other charities that are doing this kind of work. I want to, I want to remove the secrecy today, not the location obviously, yes. but remove the secrecy of Harmony House and share this kind of incredible story that Roberta just shared with the world. Yes, it is an incredible story, and as she said, it could happen to anyone, uh, and, and it has happened to a uh, countless number of women across Canada. Four in ten women and children um, have said that they have been a, a victim of violence against them. And we have right now 20% uh, single parent families. And that means that, uh, you know, it's lesser amount of money to, to spend. 80% of those are women-led. So when you think that women are, are uh, paid less than men, we're just putting women in poverty. So a lot of women end up staying when they shouldn't. And so it takes a very, very brave woman to be able to escape and not knowing where they're going. So we're glad that we're there to help them. Uh, we also have outreach services so that if you don't have a space, we don't have a space for you at Harmony House, we can tell you um, how you can go about keeping yourself safe and uh, to avoid your abuser. A lot of the women are couch surfing and we never mm -hmm. see them. So it's hard to say exactly how many women are going through this. Hmm. Hard to hear that there's that many people yes, it experiencing is. it. What would you say to Re Roberta, to someone that's listening right now that maybe is going through it and, and you want to talk directly to them? You can do it. You have to have the strength, but there are resources out there that truly do care. Mm -hmm. People think shelters are just a hole in the wall and a place where you just go and put your head, but they have the resources and they have the people who want to help. So there is help out there, but you have to be brave enough and strong enough to seek it. Mm -hmm. And it is, you know, I can't imagine, you know, the, the numbers that you're talking, because whenever I, whenever I hear numbers, I think in people. So I, I just visualize all of these women and children really needing this respite and the type of, um, of opportunity you have to ensure children are supported. That makes Harmony House different, right? 
Uh, yes, to mm -hmm. an extent. We have an in-house uh, child care, so a woman who has to go to court or a medical appointment or uh, learn some job skills can drop off their child. It's no cost to them. And uh, we take care of your child while you're doing whatever you have to do to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a therapist on, on staff who will be uh, talking to mm -hmm. you later. But uh, yes, uh, the whole idea is to provide dignity to the women so that you have your own space, you have the luxury to be able to cook your own food. Uh, we do support with a food bank as well, so because a lot of the women are low income. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you know, food is very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. So um, we we are doing the best we can with what we have, but there's so much more that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And and you must meet women as well, Roberta. And and although your stories have have sort of ended and not ended, your story isn't over. But but right. you've all come together at Harmony House, okay. and there's lots of pages left to your storybook for sure. But but everybody's story is so unique. Is there a bonding that goes on with the women that you share these stories? I find it's a subtle, quiet bonding. Like, mm. it, we, we don't have to talk about it. We right. just know. You've been there, you've went through it too, and you've survived it. It's just mm -hmm. sort of that underlying knowing mm -hmm. that while we're all different and unique, we're all the same. Yeah, beautifully said. Thank you for that. I can only imagine how much money it takes to care for women and children walk me through what you need. If someone's watching right now and they wanted to make a gift, how would you inspire them? Uh, we need to be able to set women on a path to get past their trauma, so to move on. We are always, uh, we encourage them to take the dishes and the pots and pans and the bedding and the towels to start their new lives, so we're always replacing them. So we do need ongoing funds. Uh, we get support from uh, the provincial and uh, municipal government, but those total only add up to 32% of our overall budget. So we do need uh, financial support ongoing to make sure that the child care is there, to make sure that the units can be turned over when somebody moves out. It, it, it is a process. What would you say to someone that's made a gift to, to Harmony House and maybe helped uh, change the way that you now live your life? Grateful. Grateful. It, it's, it's wonderful. It's beautiful. It's welcoming. It just makes you feel good again. Mm -hmm. And that's what you lose when you go through the trauma. It just makes you feel good again. And I love that you bring butterflies today because it is a bit of a rebirth, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's been such a great to honor to spend time with you today. And what would you say, uh, Marilyn, to, to Roberta about about just being there and, and your team being there for people like, like Roberta and Roberta herself? We are so glad that we can be there for people like you, and I am so grateful for you to come out today to let everybody know, and if uh, you can do it, anybody can That's do right. it. They just need to uh, reach out for help. Right. Oh, that was right. beautiful. Thank you. Thank yeah. you both so much. Thank I you. appreciate it. Roberta, thanks for sharing your story. You're and welcome. Marilyn Matheson, thank you so much. You're going to come back, right? Yes. Yeah, you're going to come back. We're going to meet lots of others mm -hmm. today as well. Uh, this is an hour to give, and we're spending time today talking about Harmony House. And I really encourage you to learn lots today, as we are on an hour to give, about Harmony House, but also visit their website to learn more as well, and maybe even make a donation. I'm Sam LaPrade. We're coming right back. Stay right where you are. Thank you again for joining us here on An Hour to Give. Today's all about Harmony House. We're going to meet a couple of the amazing staff that work there. Jessica Bro joins us. Hello, Jessica. Hi. What's your role? Yeah, so I'm a psychotherapist. So I'm registered with the College of Psychotherapists in Ontario. And I do work at Harmony House as sort of the in-house therapist. That's wonderful. And you brought a neck... Uh, Quirk of Poem yes. with you as well. Hello, Annette. How Hi. are you? I'm good. How are you? And what's your role? Um, so I'm the Women's and Families Advocate at Harmony House. So I'm a frontline worker at Harmony House. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Boy, I can't wait to get into this with you. Um, so so tell, me, tell me how you ended up at Harmony House. Where, where, where's your journey taken you? Yeah, so I did my, my master's degree in Ottawa here. And then I worked for about five years in the employee assistance program field. So talking to people all across Canada about all different kinds of issues. But... 
I've always felt drawn to um, to working with women and, and working in the domestic violence uh, sector. And I saw a posting at Harmony House, and it was literally everything that um, I had been looking for in a job. And uh, yeah, so I started there about a year ago now. That's fantastic. And your journey, Annette, tell me yes. all about it. Um, so I had a, I have a social work degree. Um, I worked with women and children. And yeah, I came across Harmony House and I was like, yes, I want to be part of this. And just that, that opportunity for um, you, know, you to be, to be on the, the front lines. Yeah. How have things sort of changed, do you think, through the pandemic? Uh, I remember I did a lot of radio interviews at that time and I remember vividly this woman who works with uh, women who experience domestic violence said, we're really scared because our phones have gone quiet mm -hmm. and it wasn't because everyone was told to stay safe at home yeah. and it wasn't safe so how things have changed yeah so covid made everything harder in so many different ways and like you said of course there's an increased risk right that you're even more isolated you're not able to get out maybe it's hard to even you know get out of your house at all it's hard to have privacy to make a phone call so i think the rates of domestic violence actually went up because also there's so much stress mm -hmm. There's conflict around how to deal with, you know, COVID restrictions and all of that. And then, of course, there is also, um, you know, there are some increases in funding, but then coming out of that, there has also been a loss in some funding. Mm -hmm. um, and there's just been, like, unprecedented rates, as we've been seeing, of uh, homelessness, like a huge lack of affordable housing. And all of these things have contributed to, you know, ideally at Harmony House, originally in, like, 2018, 2019, somebody would stay there maybe a year. And now people at emergency shelters are staying up to a year and people at Harmony House are even beyond a year because yeah. there's just no, there's no affordable there's no housing. Problem. Wow. And when you're advocating for women, give us a sense of, of your main focus for that, uh, for, uh, for advocating for them. So for, for me, there's a thin line between homelessness and abuse. Um, most of the women are still staying in abusive relationships because they have nowhere to go. So they would rather stay in a safe, well, it's not safe, but they would rather be somewhere where they are housed than leave and ask for help because they know they're going to end up on the streets. So it's, for me, advocating for um, housing for women, advocating for more shelters, um, advocating for beds, so there's somewhere for women to go. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't even imagine. And and we met Roberta earlier, mm -hmm. who shared her story so yeah. bravely. And, yeah. and, you know, there are so many stories, each one, very unique, of course. Mm -hmm. How do you ensure as a therapist that that you, when you're working with someone that you are working with, with them and, and hearing their story? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, a great question. And I think it's always, like I always have to put my own biases and preconceived notions aside. And it doesn't matter how many people that you've met that are in a similar situation, every single person is still going to be unique, right? And I think, so I'm always trying to be mindful of not making assumptions um, because you never know where someone's coming from. So I just always have to kind of, of course, I'm going to have my own biases mm -hmm. and preconceived notions, but I try to kind of keep that in the background and just focus on, um, you know, what do you need? And, and really that's part of, I, you know, we all try to operate mm -hmm. from, I would say, like a, like a strength-based feminist lens, which means I'm not telling you, okay, this is your problem, this is what you need to do, like, here's point A, B, C, right? It's more about saying, like, where are you at? How, how can you actually learn to tune in to what you need and how you're feeling and how do we work together mm -hmm. on that? The word I kept hearing when you were talking is patience. Mm. Uh, you would have to have a lot of patience. You would also have to have yeah. a lot of patience <laughs> advocating for women yes. because sometimes it takes a few times to get us there. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very frustrating because I'm trying to advocate for women. I'm trying to um, get women to leave abusive situations, but there's nowhere for them to go. Um, so what is what I like about Harmony House is that we have an outreach worker. So in, even if I'm not able to get a woman to come to Harmony House, I have someone to work with them in where they are, meet them where they are. So it's it's very frustrating. I try to be um, not biased um, and try to 
work with all these women as much as I can. Mm -hmm. It's hard. And I mean, I would just love uh, today to to inspire people to give donations mm -hmm. because, and I've said it before, I'll say it again. I think Harmony House is one of those organizations in this city that doesn't get the attention of some of the mm -hmm. bigger charities, mm -hmm. but doing really impactful mm -hmm. yeah. work. So, so does that sometimes? You know, you think oh, we're over here, we want to mm -hmm. kind of wave our flag, but. But because there's a lot of privacy around mm -hmm. Harmony House as well, you've got to balance all that, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, well, Harmony House actually is one of the, the larger shelters in Ottawa. We have 16 beds. Um, and I think yeah, the work that we're doing is is really essential. And, and I think you know there's often a lot of focus, understandably and rightfully so, on leaving a relationship that's violent, of course. When you leave, that's the most dangerous time. Um, but that's not the only hurdle, right? And those couple months and even years after you've left an abusive relationship is still such a critical time, right? People are often leaving these abusive relationships with no friends, no family support anymore, um, feeling very just like worn down, right? And I think it is important to have that kind of community and support around you as you're trying to really like rebuild your yourself in the wake of that. Mm -hmm. And is there is there common common themes you see with women and and what you're having to to sort of advocate for them? Yeah, so it's the common theme I see um, amongst women who are uh, being abused, it's financial abuse. Most of them are um, facing poverty. Um, and because of that, they are unable to leave. They don't have the resources to, to have the power and the strength to say, I'm leaving, because they are being tied to their partner because of finances. So we try to empower women to, we, tr we try to empower women to be able to, to have a job, to be able to save a little money here and there. It's also part of the safety planning we do with the women. Try and have some, some, fi some sort of finances to be able to leave and get back on your feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Such an important point, and, and obviously any physical violence, uh, mm -hmm. sexual violence, mm -hmm. uh, any abusive um, mm -hmm. language, and then this financial piece. Yeah. So, so you're dealing with with it all, mm -hmm. Jessica, every day. I mean, yeah, it usually comes together, right? Mm -hmm. All of these things, and um, people often say to me that some of the, you know, our bruises and injuries heal with time, but the way that someone makes you feel mm -hmm. and the way that someone can really like systematically erode your confidence and your belief in yourself um, that takes a long a long time mm -hmm. to heal. And when you see someone come into Harmony mm -hmm. House and you work with them and you start to see them start to get that self-confidence yes. back and mm -hmm. you're starting to see that dignity return mm -hmm. what does that do for you as a Yes. As someone working in um, Harmony House. Because when they first come in, for me, it's an emotional journey. Like going through the wait list, I have about 96 um, women on my wait list. And I'm trying to get them housed, I'm trying to get them into a shelter, trying to support them. So when I'm finally able to bring the woman to Harmony House, it's, I'm elated. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's emotional for me. So seeing them go through the process, um, especially for Roberta, seeing her mm -hmm. every day, she's happy, she's full of joy. It's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. How do you all take care of, of mm -hmm. yourselves and each other? Ooh, yeah, yeah that's Good. a big one. I mean, I think part of it is my mindset is always that I'm not here to fix anyone or save anyone. I'm just here to come alongside someone, offer them resources, support, you know, whatever expertise I may have. But I can't take ownership of, you know, for anyone else's journey. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's something that I'm always, that's like my, you know, boundaries that I always have to be, to be mindful of. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, just having, having time with family and friends and I think being part of a team, because mm -hmm. often as a therapist, actually, it can be pretty isolating, like I also work in a private practice where I'm all alone and it's just me, but having yeah. um, you know, other staff mm -hmm. at Harmony House that we can talk with and debrief with and support someone as, uh, as part of a team is really amazing that I can tell a client, okay, well there's a tax clinic mm -hmm. happening at Harmony House so you can you know, go there on Wednesday or make sure to come to Food Bank on Thursday, yeah. just things like that. Any, anything to add to that and how you, you also care for yourself? Yes. Um, it's a great team at Harmony House. We empower each other. So every time I feel like I'm down, there's somebody else to pick me back up. We have other women we can talk to. Um, 
Learning is a great um, resource at Harmony House. And self-care, for me, self-care is very important. So I take time for myself, exercising, doing my nails, <laughs> something fun. Wonderful, that's wonderful. We only have about a minute left, but I really want to inspire people to reach out and, and help you. Um, I know there's going to be a big fundraising event in the fall, mm -hmm. which is really exciting, mm -hmm. but we don't want to wait till the fall. Um, what would you say to someone that maybe is watching and, and they're thinking about giving a donation? Well, I think donating to Harmony House is an amazing way of investing in our local community here, and you're investing not just in women, but also in, in their children. You're investing in families and that's that's our future right and I think the more that um, you know kids at Harmony House are able to get these resources mm -hmm. and get this support um, that really you're investing in in our community and in our community's future absolutely uh, last word to you Annette anything to add in terms of, of making a donation yeah so think about helping a woman get out of an abusive situation and it's not just them they have other children they have dependents too so helping a woman um, get out of a, an abusive situation is is important. Absolutely, and the donation is going to help do that. Annette and Jessica, mm -hmm. thank you both so much, inspiring me today all about Harmony House. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it very much. Us. We're going to tell you more about Harmony House when you come right back on an hour to give. Well, I promised we'd be back to talk all things Harmony House here on An Hour to Give. I'm Sam LaPrade, and we've been joined by a couple of wonderful guests. Kate Ralph joins us and Rosalie Garropy. Hello, you two. Hello. Hi. Both from Royal <laughs> LePage, representing Royal LePage today. And, and talk to me a little bit, Kate, about why Royal LePage is involved with Harmony House. Uh, I think they're just passionate about helping uh, women and children and... Um, uh, like to see them in a safe space and yeah and I love the connection between home yes, where exactly. Ola Page of course being a local realtor and, and of course very well known globally and then to have the opportunity to to also impact people that are maybe looking for that new safe space yes exactly yeah beautiful yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that and and how did you get involved Rosalie um, well, Kate and I were neighbors back in the day, and um, we both had our babies within a week of each other. Oh, wow. <laughs> and um, we both loved design. Um, and so when her husband's um, company um, brought the, like, had this money to be used to spend to decorate the units, she wanted some help. And so uh, I gladly joined in. I, was, I wanted to volunteer with a women's shelter. I had been wanting to do that. Um, I have a part-time job somewhere else, so yeah. um, it definitely filled the, um, the void in my life mm -hmm. that I've been wanting to fill. And also, because I love design, I could fill my passion too, so yeah. it worked out and, really well. And earlier, we had Roberta on, who's a resident for Harmony House. And, and I don't know if you noticed, but when she talked about you know, that door being opened to her one-bedroom uh, apartment for the very first time, that first of all, she couldn't believe it was a one-bedroom, but that she couldn't believe how beautiful it was. Is that part of your doing, making sure that, uh, that the, you know, the place that they're going to live is truly a home? Yeah, so initially with the Giving Tuesday campaign, uh, Harmony House had a a uh, color palette design that they were hoping for, for it to feel very colorful and homey and cozy. So everything that we picked uh, represented that. And um, yeah, so we painted the walls, we uh, bought furniture that needed to be bought, uh, new bedding, towels for the bathrooms, um, all new kitchen decor. And uh, yeah, so we did artwork on the walls. So yeah, mm -hmm. we just tried to make it the way we would like it if we were going to be living there. And it's so different, Rosalie, than walking into a square box and, and thinking this is where I'm going to call home. I think, you know, the, the expression of the decor and just that, that feeling of comfort, is, is that what drives you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, it's amazing what um, a coat of paint can do, um, how much cleaner it can look in a space. Um, even color, like freshness um, and like just color is a really affordable way to change a space um, and we are on a limited budget and um, but just it changes your mood um, the textures that we use um, try to use things that would appeal to most people um, and try to use what we're given as 
donations to fit to incorporate into the different spaces to make it all look cohesive mm -hmm. um, and try to make the units look somewhat um, similar but not we can't like it's it's really hard to make yeah. them look similar when you have a budget and so you sure. get what you can get when you have the budget to do it and then you um, take from here and there to fill in all the rest. Yeah, it must be so inspiring to, to know that the room that you're working on is is going to be a safe space for someone. Does that does that sort of propel you to keep going? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, knowing that we're making a difference is so fulfilling and meaningful, so mm -hmm. absolutely. I hope to be a part of Harmony House for years to come. And I think we heard, thank you for that, and they, I'm sure they do too, um, but I think we heard from Roberta as well earlier talking about, you know, it can happen to anyone. And I think that's a really important message today, that, that anyone can find themselves being financially abused, sexually abused, in their own home, um, you know, obviously verbal abuse and, and physical abuse. I, I think that it probably surprises people that don't get a chance to work in this sector how often in every single neighborhood, unfortunately in this community, things like that are happening. So people are finding that, that respite and, and their dignity at Harbity House. So, so that part, um, walk me through a little bit, Rosalie, of how important it is for, for you to, to do that, knowing that this is exactly where women are gonna spend their days. Well, I mean, it was so nice to hear from Roberta her story because mm -hmm. um, we, we do what we feel would, would make us feel happy and comfortable and, and let these women have a chance to heal, but we don't, we never get to see the women come in, right? Yeah. So um, every so often we'll hear a story that, you know, oh, you just have to know this woman came into the unit and she was crying she was so happy mm -hmm. and we look at each other and we're like oh like that's so nice to hear yeah. because that's why we do it we we yeah. try to um, give these women a place where they feel comfortable and um, that they don't have to worry about anything and they're excited for a new life maybe mm -hmm. excited to get the pieces of their life together and um, take care of the unit like like they want to and Start a new life. Start a new life. So, t so talk to me a little bit about color palettes. Where do you, where do you go with your color palette? So we picked a uh, a uh, teal wall color as mm. a uh, feature wall, and then we just kind of went with it from there. Um, colorful rugs, and then um, blues. Yeah. So, yeah, just Calming very colorful. Colors. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. And I yeah. think, you know, th those kinds of opportunities to, to really get involved, especially at the corporate level. Um, what does your husband think about you getting involved? Oh, he's, uh, he thinks it's great. He's very proud. And yeah. Um, yeah, it's wonderful. How many units did you end up doing, Rosalie? Oh, it's hard to keep track because um, what ends up happening is there's turnover. So mm -hmm. sometimes, like once we have a unit, done and then it gets used and then um, uh, they'll, they'll find new tenants after a while, then it's much easier to turn over that unit. So we'll do it kind of faster, but mm -hmm. we've been working on it for a couple of years now. We've been doing this and um, mm -hmm. I mean, we still haven't touched all of the units. It, right. it's, a, it's a process, um, but, but some of the units have two bedrooms, mm -hmm. uh, two bathrooms. Um, living rooms, um, dining rooms, like so. It takes a while to be able to turn over just one unit. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's it's not as easy as you think, and yeah. um, it takes a lot of, you know, financial contributions um, to be able to fill those spaces. And yeah, um, yeah even you just think about watching those home shows. They do it in an hour. It's not oh, really right. taking an hour. No. Yeah, it's taking <laughs> a lot longer. Even to find the people to do the work, you right. know, like we were painting at the beginning of the yeah. process yeah. because. We couldn't find painters, you right. know, in the budget, right. and um, even just handymen um, to, to fix the furniture that are broken or, you know, things like that. That was always a challenge mm -hmm. for us. So, but it, um, over the years, it's actually starting to really the ball is really starting to roll very well. Um, things are getting done very well. So. And is it what kind of dimension does it add, knowing that children might be in the unit as well? Um, Oh, we like to make sure that there's toys mm -hmm. and um, uh, make it playful and mm -hmm. yeah, so color sure. rugs. Oh, we have a <laughs> make sure there's desks so that they can do their homework yeah. and 
things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, making sure that it's that it's for women and children Absolutely. to feel comfortable. I think that's, and I was saying that earlier, I think that's the difference between Harmonios is is the the children that are welcomed, the, the child care, all of those pieces, and then of course how beautiful it is when they open up that door and, and know that that, uh, that home is for them. Uh, any advice to anyone that's thinking about volunteering with Harmony House, Rosalie? Um, we can always use volunteers for even just to move furniture, to um, to, to help fix things, um, to even help us when we're designing, you know, mm -hmm. um, to shop. Um, there's things we need, you mm -hmm. know. Um, we absolutely love it. We've had a, so much fun. Yeah. Um, working with the and even the women at the shelter, we've got to know them, and they're just yeah. a lot of fun. Um, it's like a family. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful, caring women. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I would highly recommend if you feel like volunteering at a women's shelter, it's Harmony House is a good one. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And and uh, is it fun to go shopping and to to choose oh, everything? Yeah, that's yeah. the fun yeah, part. Yeah. Most fun yeah. part. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I think I'd be good at that yeah. part. I, yeah. You don't want me painting, but I think I could do no. the shopping part. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're picking out things with an eye yeah. uh, to what the women would so like. So that it all goes together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Making it cohesive and, and all of that. And child friendly, like you were saying, like yeah. picking things that will stand the test of time you know like okay this is metal that'll that'll yeah. last <laughs> yeah what would you say to maybe another corporation that's uh their leaders are watching right now and they're thinking about getting involved in philanthropy in this way i always define philanthropy time talent and treasure and you've brought it all um but but what would you say to other um companies and and maybe other people that are that are working in corporations to get involved in philanthropy um just reach out to to uh, shelters and mm -hmm. um, yeah, make the time. We we are one day a week, couple hours, and I uh, say reach out to shelters and mm -hmm. see what their um, needs are. Because the needs are so great. I mean, we hear it. We've heard it from previous guests as well, and we hear it in the media that the the, the need is just so desperate now coming out of the pandemic. Uh, was this something you thought about getting involved with pre-pandemic or was it just yeah. after oh, the pandemic? Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Something that I was thinking of doing. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to volunteer somewhere and the women's shelter was actually where I was trying to pick, so yeah. worked out. Everything just lined up perfectly yeah. and yeah. Kind of felt like it was meant to be. Mm -hmm. Meant to be. And I think doing it with a friend, like Absolutely. you can tell you have oh, fun. Yeah. Been so, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, as opposed to you know going and and uh, maybe spending money doing something out in the community, you know, fun for you. This is also fun for you, but it's also an opportunity for you to give back. Oh, it's, absolutely! It's, I want to I mean, inspire lots of people to do yeah, that. Yeah, right. If yeah. you have a talent or um, if you have a passion for something, yeah. you put it to good use. You know? Give back. Yeah. You only back. decorate your house, your own house, too much. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 You got to share it for others. Use yeah. other people's money yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, especially donors. I think donors know that, and I think by by listening to you as well, that you're going to be wise with the money, right? That yeah. you're oh, going absolutely. to yeah. uh, to use the money wisely to ensure that uh, that this is a beautiful home for somebody. Yes, and that's yeah. definitely something that um, we've always done in our design. We've always de decorated on a budget. You mm -hmm. know, um, um, all the we've grown up trying to kind of just learning how to do that like yeah. you know so well that's wonderful well, you have inspired me today thank you <laughs> thank you uh, kate and rosalie joining us today representing royal lepage and uh, congratulations to both of you and i know you've inspired others to come on board and represented royal lepage beautifully today thank you thank you appreciate thank you. it very much uh we're talking all things harmony house today I'm Sam LaPrade, and this is an hour to give. Come on back. Marilyn Matheson's coming back with a friend. She's the executive directory of Harmony House. Come on back. And we're back on an hour to give. Julie McLaughlin's here and Marilyn Matheson. You've come back. Thank you, Marilyn. Well, thank Appreciate you for it very much. Me. And you brought Julie with you. Mm -hmm. yes. Julie, what's your role? Uh, so I work at a head office with Royal Page Team Realty, and we're very involved with Harmony House throughout the year, all throughout the year, especially uh, during Giving Tuesday. So I work with Marilyn to, to get those campaigns out there and really raise awareness for... Or when we're when we're trying to generate funds from everybody to, to help out. 
If there's one thing I know that Marilyn loves is having great partnerships in the community. So what a wonderful partnership for you, Marilyn. It is. It is just wonderful. And they encourage others to give. And this past Giving Tuesday, it's all about the child care and the outdoor space for the children. So important. So, and I've said it a few times through the show, but that really sets Harmony House apart. Where you know, having children there, making sure it's feeling like home for them too, is that what inspired the people at Royal LePage? Yeah, I think every day our realtors work hard to help their clients find their their home, not just a house, but what they call home. Mm. And it's important to them, so it goes hand in hand finding shelters for other people, and especially not just the women, but the children. Like that hits close to home for everybody. So. Yeah making sure they have a safe space and those spaces are nice for them, but the, the children having toys and being able to get inspired and feel safe and, and have support systems as well. Mm -hmm. And and Melon, I know how dedicated you are to this community. You've held a number of, of really important roles. Tell us why this role with Harmony House is one that touches your heart so deeply. Because in the other roles I've had, uh, working with low-income families, there's a lot of single people I've seen out there, women who have been as brave as the women at Harmony House, and they haven't had the support at, like Harmony House has provided. So getting out there, and, and the children, the children just uh, hit my heart because I have a couple of children myself. I was a single parent myself. Um, and we have some wonderful childcare staff that are used to dealing with children who have seen trauma. And that's the thing. It's not just the, the uh, mother that's seen trauma. The child is traumatized, too. Wow, that really hits home. Yes. Yeah. And, and walk me through a little bit, you know, when you think about Royal DuPage and you think about, you know, realtors could just sell houses and, and list houses all day long. Why Harmony House? Why even, why even bother getting involved with a with an organization like this? What what it, inspired them? Yeah, it's our it's our culture. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we have several different things that we strive for, and and giving and being part of the community is is the biggest part of our culture at Royal Page Team Realty. Mm -hmm. And it starts right at Royal Page Canada. They started 25 years ago this year. Um, the Royal Page Shelter Foundation, which is a not for profit and all the money goes right into the community it was raised in. So anything that. we raise at Royal Page team here in Ottawa goes in Ottawa to the shelters that we know need it the most. And they've raised 46 million to date across Canada. And at Royal Page Team Realty, since we started in 2002, we've raised 1.1 million for women shelters here in Ottawa. Okay, can we just pause there for a second? <laughs> That's phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, this isn't, you know, this is, a, and, and any dollar is important, but this is big dollars making big impact, Marilyn. And when you hear those numbers, uh, what, do, what do you think? We are just so grateful to Royal Page for, for all the generous people that work there and for giving uh, up from their heart to the women's shelters. It has made a big difference. Um, we encourage other corporations to follow because they can't do it themselves. Uh, we appreciate what they've given us, but they can't fund us 100%. So we need other funding as well. For sure. Giving Tuesday always happens uh, in November, uh, usually the Tuesday after the American Thanksgiving. Um, so it's always a time where people are raising a lot of money. You obviously did that. It give us a sense of, of how much money was raised in the last year uh, for Meryl and her team at Harmony House. Uh, so every year we try to get awareness out and generate 20000 from the public. And then at Royal Page Team Realty, we match it, and that's that. We've been doing that for several years now, every Giving Tuesday. But we also give through throughout the year, and our our realtors are always raising funds in other ways as well. A lot of them donate a portion of their commissions on every deal, and they're creative. They're out there. There's comedy nights, trivia night. Over COVID, there was a shave it for shelter with one of our managers <laughs> who grew a long beard and was ready to give it up, I guess, and we raised money that way. We even had one who rented out her pool, kind of like an Airbnb, and during COVID, and renting out her backyard, and people would rent it by the hour to host parties and different things like that, or if they didn't have a pool, and all the money that she raised that summer all went to Shelter Foundation. So our realtors are very creative, and they have big hearts. They have big hearts. How 
cool is that? It's just wonderful to hear uh, yeah. all the creativity that goes into it and giving up themselves because it, it costs her for her backyard use as well. Yeah, yeah, so, yes, that's wonderful. And 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 we're, we're always looking for more creative people like Royal LePage, right, to come to the table for Harmony House. If yes. somebody's inspired today and they're like, we want to get involved, uh, what, what advice would you have for them? Get in touch with us. You can get mm -hmm. in touch with us uh, by email or get in touch with us by phone. And uh, let us know. We are happy to work with you. Uh, we have a big gala coming up in, in uh, October. I know you're going to be MC. Can't wait. Uh, that's yeah, yeah. wonderful. And we're looking for sponsorship there as well. Yeah. And that's a way to, to give. And uh, we will let everyone know that you have given yeah. and how deep your heart yeah. goes. It's so important, and, and I think women helping other women as well, and I know you've got lots of men and women as, as realtors, but there's just something about that, that spark and hearing you talk about this project. I can tell it's, you're very passionate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, our, we have people from all walks of life working for us, and, mm -hmm. and I mean, you see it coming through your homes yes. and the kids, like, no two people are the same. And, their journey is different and those resources need to to, to change and evolve with that too. Mm -hmm. so. And your team, we, we met so many of your team today talking about the work that they do frontline every single day. Uh, give us a sense as the executive director uh, of Harmony House, um, you know, what, what that does for you knowing that every single day your, your team is out there working. And they, they're terrific, and I've heard nothing but praise from the people who they have helped. Uh, people like uh, Leanne, who uh, helps with their housing support, trying to find places for them to move. Trish is our outreach uh, person, trying to help women who phone in and may, may not have space for them, but she gives them safety tips on what to do mm -hmm. now. Like, for example, find a space in your house that locks. So in case you have to lock yourself away, always carry your cell phone. In case you have to call 911, um, make sure when you leave to take all your documents so that you get priority housing. All of these things uh, we'll let you know by phone. And I've even known Trish to get in a car, drive over, pick up a woman up, from her space and find her a safe space to stay overnight. Mm. It's it's you know I, I'm I'm obviously not working in this in the sector that Marilyn does. You're working for Royal Page, but when I hear Marilyn talk like that, I think like my worst day at the office is never going to be as challenging as that. Is it almost as well, you know, because you deal with selling homes that that whole sense of, of being safe. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, finding those safe spaces within your home and and even speaking earlier, you never know who it's going to happen to and your mm -hmm. life can change just like that. So having that support there and, mm -hmm. and knowing it's there and that's important. Absolutely. What's the biggest myth do you think, Marilyn, in terms of violence against women? What, what do you want to share today that maybe people are be surprised? A lot of people feel that uh, they show up on our doorstep with black eyes and bloody noses. There are all kinds of different types of abuses. There's financial abuse, there's abuse of being isolated, being told that you are no good, you're never going to go anywhere, Don't you can't leave because you won't be able to go anywhere. That really plays on a woman's self-esteem. Uh, so it's not just uh, physical bruises. As, uh, as Jessica mentioned, it is the psychological bruises uh, that we see all the time. And it's never your fault. It's not your fault that you're being abused. Don't let your abuser tell you that. Such an important message today. And, and when you share with the team that you've raised lots of money at Royal LePage for Harmony House, what's the result? What, what does, the, the, does the culture get even deeper to keep up the, keep up the commitment? Absolutely. I think uh, we get excited when we, when we hear the results on result day <laughs> after that Tuesday yeah. and we, we find out and that we get to do that full pledge match is, is important. And I mean, it, it gives that excitement through everybody. We, we always have different events that we do. I mean, next month we're, we have our Denim Tuesday event. We usually raise about fifty to 60000 in one morning, and it's, it's an auction of items donated by our realtors and staff and then purchased by them in the same morning. 
And so, I mean, the emotions in that room when we talk about where that money is going to go and then the excitement when you announce it, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's worthwhile to see everyone's faces and, and then see the faces of those that it, it's given to. And, and even today, talking to somebody who's, who's actually gone through the home, you know, it, it hits you. Yeah, it does hit you. And, you know, speaking about uh, that, Roberta sharing her story earlier today and, and really having an opportunity to talk about how grateful she is uh, to Harmony House. And, and where do you spread your grateful, your gratitude uh, to today? Our gratitude to Royal LePage and all our other donors and our frontline staff because they have a very difficult job. Uh, it, they're frustrated when they can't um, find space for, for women, frustrated by some of the policies that we have out there that restrict finding safe spaces, um, and frustrated that there is a need for places, more a need for places like Harmony House. In this country, first world country, that we have that many women that are in need uh, and uh, shelters all over the place and women as uh, Roberta said she spent a night on the street oh that just broke my heart it really did and we know there's so many women that mm -hmm. are that are looking to get out and, and inspiring them um, to to do and, and to seek help uh, is such an important part of our chat today as well yes um, thanking all of the people at Royal LePage I hope you'll do that on my behalf uh, and, and just share how how key it is for them to keep going and, and don't give up at Royal LePage keep keep uh, working for Harmony House absolutely absolutely we will be spreading the word and, and making sure they all they all hear that you know? yeah. yeah are you getting ready for 2024 24's campaign already yes well yeah. I mean the, the funds we raised in the last one is going towards the kids and their outdoor spaces so as much as we talk about the the spring market and real estate. The spring is the time for the kids to get out there and play, and I think that's they're going to start gearing up and getting those spaces ready for the kids. And and once that's ready, we'll find out where where we need it next, right? And and where in the home and the shelter you want to focus on next, and we'll drive that campaign to for the fall. Well, thank so you so much for your support. We Wonderful. really appreciate it. Well, that's the most beautiful way to end our time together. Thank you so much. Marilyn Matheson, thank you. I know you have angel wings under that jacket. I know you do. You're an angel in our community. Thank you very much. And thank you so much, Jessica. Appreciate your time today, too. Thank you so much for everyone joining us today, talking about Harmony House and learning all about this great organization.